Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome back to our vampire game. Um, this is literally just, we're playing Vampire the Masquerade, House of Reeves edition. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty um, much. So, Livington, I believe it's your turn. Yes, and I got a really interesting card. Did you now? Ooh. <laughs> Uh, so for the move card, it's a special one. Um, there will be a chance that the family will leave that home and be replaced by a new family. Oh, we got a move card. Yeah. Let me... Oh, I scrolled over. Now I messed up all the formatting of our, of our page. Sorry about that. Uh, that hmm. should no, over just l hair more. Okay. So, uh, we got a move card. Yep. So, you, may, you make a scene, you, su you suggest a reason why the family might have to move out, and then we'll vote. This yes. is the first move card that we've had, so there's no, um, like, r little votes right now. But, um, make a scene, and if there's a good reason why the family might vote, or might leave from it, uh, we'll do a vote, or, uh, well, we're gonna do a vote regardless. But we, if, if it's a good reason, then we vote, we might vote yes. And uh, if there's a unanimous yes for this first one, uh, then they get moved out. Um, if there's even one dissenting opinion, um, it goes to no, they don't move out. However, then there's sort of like a move value that goes up. So that means the next time a move card would come out, uh, it's been, that move value has been incremented by one. So now there's an automatic one yes. And once there's a number of yeses equal to the number of players, the game, uh, they, the family moves out, right? So that would mean, so if, if once again, so example, uh, two yeses, one no. Uh, family stays, move card value goes to one. The next card comes out, uh, another move card, uh, same voting, two yeses, one no, game is over because that plus one makes it three people. Mm -hmm. Got it? That's how it works. Yep. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I think the scene is brought up like like the, the the secret ritual thing they're doing their their rituals of protection or maybe they're uh, they're on the ropes yeah what are they doing yeah um and i think donald comes up with what if we just leave <laughs> if we just move to you know uh i don't know South Carolina instead. Do you want to role play this scene? Or are you just uh, saying that? We can. Well, I was just thinking Beth uh, or Veronica would immediately say, um, well, what's, what would, what's to stop them from, from tracking us? And I think Beth jumps in too and she says... We already live in the podunkiest of podunk towns in the middle of goddamn Nebraska. And if you think moving is going to help, you are sure as shit wrong. I was out traveling recently, and I know the number of vampire families out there claiming territory just keeps going up. But it's, it, it's about the don't, don't, What about Alaska? Here. The hunters will be too busy here, because uh, Athena has a much larger family. They won't follow us, and another family to contend with, well, we can deal with that, but at least we won't have to deal with the hunters. What about Hawaii? <laughs> we avoid the sun? It would be a very, uh, it would be a spot uh, not very suspected. I don't know. That's a good point. That's a good point. Somewhere like remote. Alaska's pretty popular, at least. Uh, that is popular, for, especially with this for, global warming. Yeah. Especially amongst vampires. Wouldn't it be a very good place to hide from hunters either. They would definitely see it coming. But Hawaii, on the other hand, that, that might be a thing. All right. So we take it to a vote, and this is a player vote, right? It's not yeah, it's a yeah. Yeah, sorry, this is a player vote, correct. Yeah. Um, 
So even though I tossed it up, uh, I am voting to stay. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to say, like, we're going to do, like, a thumbs thing, and up means yes, uh, no means move. But, okay. Um, I would vote to move. Um, you know what? I... I would have voted to move if the two of you had already voted to move, but I kind of want to see this keep going, and since it's already going to keep going, I'm just going to go ahead and vote yes. So yeah, okay. To stay for now. So. Anyway. Okay. Re reshuffle. It is reshuffled. Okay. And... Draw one cards. Uh, I've got. Come on. Change. Okay. Hmm. Times they are a changing. Okay. I think this is not this a karaoke stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, so I think this is taking place in the living room, and it's got, like, the TV has been taken down off of the ceiling and set up correctly again, because Donald is there hooking up his new, uh, next generation Xbox, whatever comes after Xbox One. 720. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is Xbox 720. Um, yeah, so he's hooking that up, you know, with the... Um, like, comes with Oculus Rift Standard. Whatever, I don't know. So he's, he's just connecting that to the television and getting that whole system hooked up. When, uh, I think, like, a leaf comes up and is like... Oh, dude, is that, like, the new Xbox 760? That's... I heard there's, like, the best version of Street Fighter on that one. And and Donald's like, fuck yeah, there is! And he, like, pulls out the, the new Street Fighter because totally that's the best game that is, you know, coming out with the system. And so um, the scene closes on... Uh, on uh, Leaf and uh, Donald playing Street Fighter on the couch. Like VR street fightering in yeah. the living room. Yep. Awesome. I love it. Totally. It's another shuffle. Goes to me. Mm-hmm. Really? Jeez. <laughs> it's the second time it's happened that we've had a change followed by a change. I know. Uh, I weird. shuffled it. I believe you. Hey, random change yeah. sometimes happens that way. Yep. Um, okay, so the world outside is changing. The skyscraper is finished. Um, the skyscraper... Uh, you, you see the skyscraper's lights now uh, come in to the windows at e on, during the evening. Um, I think this is just a scene where we, like, it's like a time lapse of, like, several days and stuff, and then we mm -hmm. finally see, like, the lights turn on and stuff like that, so now there's the glow of lights, uh, on the pool, and the shadow. Okay, I like that, cool. Um, the family... Uh, once again, this, this is just the uh, another sign that um, they need to do something. Come on, deck. Give us some good stuff. Yeah. It's the problem using a deck as a pacing mechanism. Sometimes yeah. it's fucking perfect, like on point. Other times it's like... Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, age, uh, age leaf. Oh, yeah, we, leaf is 27 now. Damn, leaf's getting up there. Yep. He's Old man Leafington. Leafington's find a girl. Or a guy. So, uh, it's time for more humor in these dire times. 
Alright. Um... Uh, all right, so uh, Leaf is like very excited coming into like the living room, uh, and he's like, "Everyone, you need to go to the balcony. We're like right now, you have to see this." And uh, like they're they're pretty troubling times. Um, but, uh, but like Leaf doesn't seem like troubled. Mm -hmm. Seems like excited by something. Uh, and they all get outside, and like the the lights of of the skyscraper, like like. <laughs> and he's pointing towards it, and maybe at first, like you don't, they're like, "What? Like I don't see it." But if if you again unfocus your eyes and not look at it, any specific lights, uh, like it, it it just forms like a big penis. <laughs> oh, because he's he's like infiltrated their building and like turned off on and and lights on and off. So it looks like a giant dick. Oh my so god! It's like a giant dick. On, on the side of the building. Nice. That's pretty funny, actually. Dig it. And and I think, uh, I think Donald really likes it. Uh, yeah. But maybe Beth and Veronica is like, dude, like we don't need this kind of attention. Like, yeah. What if they knew it was you? Yeah. Why are you antagonizing? Yeah. Why are you antagonizing them? I like it. I'm really. Yeah. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. That's good. Kelsa? Oh, uh, yeah, I gotta draw a card. Hold on. I forgot that that was the next step. <laughs> okay. Um, ancestors. Again. Oh, jeez. Okay. Wow. We're, this, this is, like, very much hearkening back to the last ancestor scene that I did in the living room. Everyone mm -hmm. is sitting around the table, they're drinking their drinks, but now the biggest change is that Beth sits at the head of the table instead of Leslie, and this is the anniversary of Leslie's death, and I think Beth's, like, all she says is, um, you know, three years gone but not forgotten and then everyone just solemnly like takes a drink they don't say anything out loud and uh and like there's like candlelight and everything and like everyone is there including leaf around the table and they all just like ritualistically take the drink at the same time okay that's super good Awesome. Okay, that's my scene. Do you have this, um, Kelsa? Do mm -hmm. you have an old copy of the Story Games Names Project? I sure do. Could you send that to me when you have a second? Using that earlier, absolutely. Uh, yeah, only because I need. I was looking for it, uh, and I was like, man, I'm pretty sure it's my Google Drive, and I, it's not there. So, thank you. Uh, I would deal myself a card in the meantime, and then do my scene. I think I'm gonna send it to you on Skype. That's probably easiest how to send it. Oh, awesome. Conflict. Show how the needs and desires of family members are at odds. Um. The obvious one would be to play up um, Donald and Beth. The not so obvious one that I want to do is Leaf. Um, Leaf's been here for so long, right? Mm -hmm. And Leafington, or Leaf, sorry. <laughs> no. uh, I know. Uh, it's 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 bad. getting uh, it's getting late. It's uh, Leaf. So um, I think we see Leaf uh, say like, "Listen, guys, cut the shit. Um, I want in." 
I want to be part of you guys. I'm already here with you guys. Um, I want to be a vampire. And the group uh, and the family's like, no, 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 like you can't. We need you to be a human. Um, especially in these times more than any, we need someone who can blend in and go in the daytime and, and do this kind of stuff. And he's like, yeah, but I want to be immortal. Like I want to be, I want to be a badass. This is this. I can't. I've I've li- I've been here for six years. Like my life's not going anywhere. I'm I'm with you guys already. Let me join you. Like I don't want to be. I don't want to become a vampire when I'm older. Like I'm in the prime of my life. And they're like, no. Like we, we need you for this. And um, gets a. I think I think uh, Leaf's like, man, you guys suck. And uh, I think he like breaks all the the bottles and stuff on the um on the uh, liquor cabinet stuff. Oh damn. And like leaves. Yeah, Leaf's grown a spine. Damn dog. Alright. Well, he ages up another year before anything comes of that. <laughs> that was probably winter, yeah. Because it's, uh... It's a new year with Paul's new turn. Uh, so it's another uh, hierarchy for me. Mmm, hierarchy. Yes. Um... Alright, so I think... Um... I think leave changes his attention over to uh, Donald because uh, at first he was like pleading to to Beth to turn him mm-hmm. but it's like it's like you know late in, in the night so like almost morning and they're like playing playing VR Street Fighter uh there's like a new patch with like a new new dudes that beat each other up. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, new battle bros. Yeah, as you, as you do. But Leaf is like, hey man, if you turn me, then like I would totally side with you, and then you could become the patriarch, and I would totally follow whatever you want. Um, you know, we can, we can, we can break Beth's hold, cause like... Oh boy, division! Uh, division in the ranks! We've had it like terrible for like forever. It's and, true. like it's, it's going nowhere. Oh so it's boy. it's time for a change, man. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff right there. Does he, does he agree or are we gonna leave that up in the air? Oh god. I kind of just I kind of just want to like have like Veronica walk in and uh, like Donald and Leaf having like you know crazy vampire turning neck biting. Yeah. But, uh, so I'm Leaf is to... Leaf is no longer normal human. Yeah. I am totes in the back. And he no longer works for Leslie. <laughs> and he also doesn't have a broken leg. Also yeah. sure. uh, and there's a blood stain on the couch. Vampire. Because <laughs> Donald sucks at, you know, being clean. Oh. Awesome. Good one. Alright. Kelsa. Gives a whole new meaning to the word necking. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I have my own headcanon for that. Just saying. Um, what did I draw? Support. I don't think I've done that yet. Um, show a family member support one another against adversity. Okay. Yeah, I think this is um, a couple of months after Leaf has been turned into a vampire. And I think this is... It's going to take place in the ritual room, and I think that Leaf is like, like, curled up in a ball, 
in on the floor of the ritual room, like trying to hide behind something, crying blood tears because you know vampires do that. Um, and like is just really upset about um, the whole being a vampire thing. It's not everything that it was like they <laughs> thought it was going to be. Oh yeah, it's yeah. And and uh, I think that. Um, you know, Veronica walks in and is like, oh, there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. And, like, he, like, kind of sits up and, like, sniffs and, like, wipes the blood tears off of his face and, um, like, tries to, to not look at her. Um, and she just, like, sit, like, kneels down beside him, puts her, you know, puts her arm around his shoulder and is like, you know, it, it's okay. You know, I, I know it's hard. I, I've been there before. You know, mm-hmm. I, you can't you can't call your mom, but I can show you how to go and hover outside her window so you can keep up on her, anyways. And and he like gets does that little like sniffle hiccup thing from ca- crying too much, and is like is like really. Did you teach me how to hover? Nobody, nobody else teaches As me. As ever, it. yeah. They, they just say I have to learn it on my own. Even Donald, I thought, I thought, and like he starts crying again, and and like the scene just cuts, like pulls away as like he he's like sobbing onto her shoulder, down in the ritual room. Oh, damn! That's sad. Yep, you're welcome, everybody. <laughs> and I will deal myself a new color. Oh, tradition. Tradition. I think that uh, Leaf is now accepted into the group as a vampire, um, bar- uh, barring one condition. Um, oh yeah, you know what it is? To be a vampire, like part of this like specific family. Rite of passing. Yeah, the rite of passing. You have to kill a hunter. Uh, and uh, yeah, in the um, in the in the ritual room, uh, Lincoln returns. Or I did it again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, it's my fault. I, again, I'm so I'm sorry. The head of the he returns with the head of the hunter that was tormenting them and the one that killed Leslie. Oh, oh nice, shit. nice. He's like badass. Like I told you guys to turn me because yeah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. All right, so my turn. Another year passes, but Leaf does not age. No one ages anymore. It's fine. Uh, it's that time again. <sighs> oh, move. Okay. Another move card. <laughs> what is it this time? Um, I think this time it's in the living room. Um, uh, Beth is on like the matriarch side still, uh, though Donald maybe like scooted his chair over to like also be like almost on the matriarch side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Veronica is there, Leaf is there, uh, and Athena is there, mm. and she is demanding that um, they, like, it was a terrible disaster, like, killing that hunter was like a mess, um, there's like at least three other hunters that 
that know about it now? Uh, how could you like let this idiot go out by himself and she's like pointing to leave? Um, mm-hmm. So you guys need to either pack up and join me or you need to get the fuck out uh, is what she's telling uh, the family. Okay. So what do we choose? Oh, well, never mind. I guess that's I, you, that's the re- it doesn't matter. That's the that's the reason why the family might move. That, that's the reason. I okay, mean, so like, before if you wanna make, oh. make arguments, then you can. Oh no, I I, I was I wasn't sure if you had a uh, a stake in like if you, you if you were saying that because you didn't want to take a like ownership of of like a decision. You're fine. Uh, no, it's, it's okay. Um. All right, then then we're gonna do our voting again. But we're gonna vote. Um. So we're gonna put our hand out like this, like in front of the camera. Uh, right. Thumbs up means yes. Thumbs down means no. I'm gonna say one, two, three. Vote, and on vote, we're gonna turn our hands. So okay? yes, wait, is... wait, wait, wait. yes to move, and no is yes. Yes is move. No is is stay. Um. So one, two, three. Vote will be the thing. Okay. Right. All right. So one, two, three. Yes. Ooh. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all right. Uh, well, we get it then, though. Uh, circle gets the square, though, uh, because our move vote was plus one from last time. That's true, yep. actually. All right, so our family moves, and that'll probably be it for our game today. So, damn, that was good. Yeah. yeah. I had to vote no because um, I I feel like certain members of the family would take that ultimatum as, as a challenge. Yeah. Be like, well, that's like oh. season two, right? Season yeah. two is like breaking them down from the inside, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, uh, it, it was partly because it was a decent ending point. Yeah. Uh, that I voted yes, and and like the game doesn't have to end on move, but it's it's usually where it ends. In in my in my head, like as a as a little postmortem thing, they would have have like. Joined Athena and then and then gone on from there. So they have like moved across the street pretty much, <laughs> right? Uh, and not not really ran from their problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I hear you on that. So um, let's talk about a little bit. Let's decompress a little bit. What do we think of the game and what do we think of this game in particular? Did we like it? Anything? I really enjoyed it. I. Uh, the only thing that I had like preconceived coming into this was that I wanted to have uh, one of the rooms be either like a walk-in pantry or a walk-in closet, some kind of small confined space where you yeah. could have really intimate scenes. And yeah. um, I, I, did I, really I steal liked- that from you with the ritual room? I don't think so. I mean, like. The ritual room was somewhere like even more private, but it was also like larger than the closet it was attached to, at least in my yeah. mind and in your drawing. So it was like you just walk through the closet like a hallway, and then yeah. you have a larger scene in the ritual room. Sure, but when I when I got that build, um, I don't know. I, it's just that it made sense given the fiction and the time to do it for yeah, me. No, totally. Um, okay. Um, I I liked it. I think, uh, uh, and I tried to, I tried to get on, also my own case about it, like changing in the environment a bit more, uh, and, and it usually kind of came in as like afterthoughty stuff, and and like some of it was like really cool, like the the shadow well, of the thing, like for yeah. shadow change and like being oppressive and stuff and, and like you know that was kind of cool but some rounds we were just like like completely blew over it and didn't mention it at all. well yeah and i think i think what happens sometimes is like we we kind of draw ourselves in a corner with vampires um we drew ourselves in a corner i think of like a, a cleanish apartment yeah like i guess we could have done a little bit of extra details here and there uh, sometimes it just happens in the game. Um, yeah. the, the di- designer himself has said, like, sometimes this happens. Usually it's just, like, you remark about something that exists for a little bit of time, like, temporary things. Um, Wait, which I don't I don't think is, like, a bad thing. No. Uh, and I, I know I, like, used things that were added, uh, like, like, a couple of times. So yeah. I, I definitely... Nice... 
it's a nice touchstone. Like if you're if you're a bit stuck of like, all right, let's let's just interact with that thing. It's true. Oh. Um, physical symbols of of what's happened is super important in story games. That's one of the reasons why I like Downfall. Mm-hmm. And like, not to get too off track, but like Downfall's ability to take like a symbol of the tradition of what's going on is like Mark Hobbs. You're you're a genius. Uh, cause I, Mark was the one who suggested Caroline do that, uh, and it's like, so good. Oh, no, that's not true. I think Caroline, I, no, no, that was Caroline Hobbs. That was her idea. Okay. Mark did something else that I really liked, but, but that was, that was all, that was all her. I, I'm giving credit where it's due. Sorry. Uh, anyways, yeah, physical, um, it's a symbol, right? That's what it is. Yeah. It's a physical symbol, and that's super important in, in story games, f- symbols, yeah, um. definitely. And I, I really enjoyed like doing some of the transient things, like having the room smell like a cloud of hairspray when Beth walked into it. Like, yeah, I think that was a really. Um, I, I don't know. It was really evocative for me, and I think I could have done a lot more with smell and scent in general. Um, to set mood for places because that was something I didn't really do other than that one time and I I think that it's something in a story game that really is underutilized is descriptions of scent because like that can really like trigger memories and even if it's like a smell can always trigger a memory Mm -hmm. and like I, I feel like a description of a smell can be just as effective sometimes I like um, it, and and for me, I, I I like throughout the whole game had like like should we be playing like in character more? Like I felt like it, it played out great. No, um, this sometimes I was like you know should we should I be like all right this is a scene you're him you're her. You can. You absolutely can. Um, it's up to you. Uh, yeah, this, it, it was yeah. just a thing in in my mind because we we make the characters and then we just narrated what happened with them and um, like, what they said. And we, well, we like yeah. really compacted our scenes, which was great because then you can get through a bunch of changes in cards and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's what I said early on is that a lot of times the scenes end up feeling like microscope dictated scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just for me. That's just my style of play, I guess. Uh, but you don't have to. Yeah, you can absolutely be like, I want, I'm gonna play this person. Um, hey, can we ro-, like, or declare like, hey, I want to role play this out because I actually don't know how this is going to end. But this is the situation, right? Yeah, and and maybe maybe the game just pushes you more in the in the uh, directed scene uh, of where you yeah. have an idea where you want to go with it. Like you have all these prompts and people and like mm-hmm. you make a decision about it. Yeah. This is and a. You just this is a, what happens, and it doesn't. I don't know. Like, like I felt like I, I never really had a huge opportunity to be like. Well, I don't know what happens. What, what happens? Except for the move thing, where yeah. you're voting as, as players and not really as. In character. Well, and, I uh, guess I mean character. that means that every time that you got a card, the you had a solid idea of what you think would happen based on that prompt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. and I, I think that part of that is just the way we were building the scenes and the way we were building the characters. We all had a fairly like equal investment in all of them, and so when you when you reached a decision point, it was easy to make that decision. Like, uh, like when Eric was talking about how when I got ancestors, and he was like oh, I've got an idea for this, I've got an idea for this. And then I I did the toast. He's like, wow, that is, like, really spot on close to what my idea was. Yeah. And so I, I think that was... Um, but that's happened more than once. That's just our play styles, <laughs> Kelsa. We are, we are often in sync, like, real, real much. It's scary good. <laughs> Yeah, I love having you on the show for it. It's it's really cool. You and Tux as well. It's like oh we, my god, like get, the three of us get together yeah. and it just goes. Yeah, it works it works well. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, what do you guys think of the cards in the game? Um, do you do you like the ability to draw one? 
I was talking to other people about it. We we're considering doing like draw two, choose one uh, as an option. Mm-hmm. Um, I like drawing just one because it forces you to do the hard choices. Yeah. And when you when you get a card that is mostly negative, you you have to do it. And you can't just yeah. be like, ah, you know, I could... You can't weasel out of it, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I think. No, it's like, I, I, know, I know what you mean. Yeah, that's, that was, that's the big thing that comes up when we talk about that. Yeah. I, and, and I agree with that. I, I just think, like, the repetition of, like, it's changed. No, it's changed again. Like, oh. but, but, like, everything yeah. just changed. What am I... I don't know. Uh, so... I, I think I think I have more problems with repetition than being forced into one card. And even though, like, as a as a person, like, it'd be great to have choices. I think yeah, it's a, it's a stronger prompt if you're forced into one or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Well, it also uh. relieves a lot of hesitation because I've played. Um, the quiet year a number of times and most of the cards in that have two prompts and you choose between them yep. and sometimes the thing that takes the longest is going between the two prompts and deciding which one to go for and by removing that choice and just having one one thing to do um you know it, it sparks that creativity yeah that's a game i've never played yet really I mean, I'm sorry, uh, on, on this show, I've played that game, like, three or four okay. times. I, I wrote up, uh, yeah, because, no, I actually, I, at a story game, I did This War of Mine in The Quiet Year, which was, like, a year until a ceasefire. Uh, this was around the time Adam was doing this War, his, this war of Mine playthrough. I know you were talking about and doing that. Yeah, I, I wrote it up on, on my blog, and it's, it was super good. Uh, it, w it was really, really fun. It's a great game. The game takes literally no modifications except, you know, just ignore the supernatural and just come up with a more, like, logical idea. But other than that, um, I don't know. But The Quiet Year just has a couple internal problems with the game that I'm not a big fan of. Um, notab notably, the, uh, the game is explicitly designed to not have table talk involved. Which just doesn't suit well with me. It just doesn't. I'm just somebody who wants to talk about things that, like like future things. Like it happened several times in this game already. We were talking about <laughs> details about future events that we probably shouldn't have been talking about because that could have been future scenes. Right. Um, true. Like that's the what's one reason why to do it. It's also to um to sometimes we play these games to um not just get into sync. Like we want to get into sync, but we don't want to get into perfect sync. Uh, we want some extra ideas coming in and flowing, and uh, we want those like slight mutations and like interpretations of events that are in our in our own headspace. That's what makes games like these fun. Uh, what about oh the idea of having another player make the choice? Holy shit, Iron Fist, that's a great idea. Hmm. Um, hmm. Hmm. So you still have the forced, but also for the good of the table, you can have like oh man, not change again. Yeah. Or I'm really uh, not ready to move, and we already have plus two against. Right, right. So like, it would slow the game down, but you mean like you want to like have the option of other people vetoing your card or something like that? Like like I don't want this I, card, I and then then like, it's like confirm or not. I give one to Kelsa, and it's like, oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can give people cards yeah. as an option. Okay. Like, like I think instead. So they're so of, it's like a hot potato. Like someone's gonna be forced to use this. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then if it's like if it's not used in a certain amount of time, you some, like it has to be the next card. It could be like that, yeah. Okay. Or or like you draw like a bunch, and then you have to like pick one from the pool. But mm -hmm. I, I guess then it comes the same pick one thing. Like yeah. I kind of like the hot potato idea. Like if you pull the card and you don't really want to do it, you can pass it to the next player. But if it comes all the way back to you, you have to do it that time. Yeah. Or it becomes like a yeah okay now that's f probably fine. Otherwise, I think it's like what it, or if you don't use it, it becomes a disaster or like it becomes a bad card, <laughs> um, which might be interesting. Well, and and that's interesting that you say like a bad card because I don't think there's bad cards. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, but just like a, a negative story effect, which isn't uh, which could be a positive like net positive gain for the story that yeah, we're yeah. coming up with, but like it means something bad will happen. 
Sure, sure. Uh, so you draw two or three cards, but then you give it. Uh, then you give it to another player to have their choice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe, but then, then it, just, it just. I can't help but feel like you picking. That's like. It's out of. That means that you, as the player on your turn, you don't have any control over what card gets chosen. So that's functionally equivalent to just drawing from a deck. Yeah. Right. Like. It's a little bit more guided. Um, Elric also was saying you have those two prompts on one card. Um, you have one other player decide for which of the two prompts you are using. Well, that's, that's similar to having two cards and picking one, but yeah. another person picking it for you. Oh, uh, we! I'll try it. I'll try it sometime playing this game. I'm open to to tweaking and stuff. It's like the game is good as is, but I can't help but feel mm -hmm. like. I just want to tweak it. I feel like there's just something that, that it's like a for me this game's like a ninety percent. Like it's 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 so good. I'll pick this up and play whenever I want. But I just I can't help but feel like there's just you know there's like a maraschino cherry missing, right? Like that goes on top of this. It just really gets it. And you're like, yes. Yeah, but but, but on the other but, hand, um, you also don't want to put whatever fruit on top. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. It can't be anything. It, there's there's a key thing miss. Not. I, mean, I don't want to say key. It's, it makes it imply that it, it has to be here. But like, there is one unique thing that this game needs. I just don't know what it is yet. Uh, yeah. But this game is super good. I, I kind of feel you like this. Oh, but that's true. I, I like the it. idea is I giving really guidance like to another source. Of, okay. Yeah. This is like one of my favorite games that, that have been on Once Upon a Game. That's super great, man. I'm so glad to hear that. Like this is this is someone's like pet project that they made for free. This game is entirely for free. Um, this guy's just a as a fantastic story game Seattle uh, local, but I think he just moved, which is really sad. I think, but he moved to Hawaii, so I don't know how sad I can be. <laughs> um, but uh, this is. This is a great game. Like this, is, yeah. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed this game too. Um, this would be one of my uh, select games I would use for getting somebody who's never played a game before. This is a very good like breaking the ice kind of game. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, yeah, I think so. I think it gives you enough prompts, and I think. Uh, and we did it like several times where you can really like be like oh man I, I'm kind of stuck like yeah feed, feed me a um, line this game yeah I feel like by by like the second or third round for somebody brand new uh, they would completely get it like they're like mm -hmm. oh oh you can do that oh you can do that oh wow okay because everybody almost universally always is is cautious about what moves they make in any game they play Right, you're always you always err conservatively, like you put your toe in the water, uh, and then, and then you're like, oh, I can do this, I can do that, I can do that, and like you just build because that's just how you, you know. And I especially like this game as an introduction because when, as a new player, you get into something like disaster or conflict or even departure, where it's like, okay. We somebody, lose someone, yeah. Somebody is leaving this house, whether they move out or they die. Tell us who leaves. Maybe it's more than one person, and yeah, what yeah, and they like you give someone in this control, which is like crazy. Yeah, um, and it's like so you are changing something major about the setting. The yeah. setting and the game will be notably different from here on out. Yeah. Um, and to, to hand someone that kind of control and be like, it's all yours. Um, that could be both intimidating but also really liberating because it's like, oh, like you said, it's like, oh wow, I didn't realize that I could do this. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's like that would be the make or break point when you're like, I like role playing games. <laughs> <laughs> like when you're when that when that sword of uh, fictional Democles is hanging over your head and you're like, I'm gonna make a decision, and and then you're like, oh man, that impact the game like thirty minutes later, and. Uh, Either you you jump on that and you're like this is amazing, or like it's like making a, a story together, or or you're like this is not for me. Um, that's all, and that happens. Like I play with people who are like this game wasn't for me, or like I, I'm not feeling this. I much prefer Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. I've done, that's happened to me several times. It's what it is. One of my one of my good friends. Uh, he's like I played Microscope. I didn't like it. Uh, I want to go back to D and D. I was like okay, cool. Do you do you man? 
Uh, so, all right. Uh, let's let's do some some final thoughts and uh, some outros, right? Any any other things we want to talk about for this game? Uh, I was kind of gunning for a romantic subplot between <laughs> and Veronica. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I, I really? Because I was totally it. gunning for a romantic subplot between Leaf and Donald. <laughs> or, oh. or actually, or Veronica and Beth. I, so. I was thinking about that too. But it, like the prompts didn't come up. I okay. really wanted to put in a romantic subplot though. Yeah, we just did not get a romantic subplot going. Uh, yeah, no. But yeah, we, we, we do love our romantic so subplots here on Once Upon a Game. <laughs> the, uh, I think this is probably the... But, the least uh, amount of romantic subplot that I've seen in a Once Upon a Game game. Yeah, I? that's... <laughs> even Torchbearer had more. <laughs> so, um, Paul, uh, how can people find you on the internet? Thank you so much for for playing with us today, by the way. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what it is. Like, my, my Zoom is crapping out again. Maybe it's the time of night. So if I, yeah. if I uh, disappear, uh, whatever. You're, you're here now, so you, use your precious internet. Yes. Uh, you can find me as Leafington on Twitter and on Twitch, uh, where I mostly <laughs> make bad jokes and uh, I, I used to say worse drawings, but I'm thinking my jokes are now worse than my drawings. Uh, I'm getting better at that. Just just practice lots, kids. If you want to art and draw pentagrams like Eric. Yeah. Oh yeah, squig squig spaghetti grams. <laughs> Man, uh, yeah, iron, iron fist. That's so. That's you're not shoehorning hard enough. We're not. We're just not trying. If you can't make, because you can make any proper subplot. That's ex a romantic subplot. That's absolutely true. We just weren't that's trying. Pretty, pretty true. That's that's hilarious. Conflict subplot. <laughs> yeah, um, totally. So Kelsa, uh, tell us tell us the internet about yourself and stuff, and and how can people find you. Hi, hi, internet. Um, I'm Kilsa. You can find me uh, at Kilsa on Twitter and twitch.tv slash Delphi on Twitch here or on YouTube. There are some VODs of the uh, Dresden Files RPG that I run um, once a month uh, or more often if I can sh wrangle my players <laughs> uh, from around the world. Um, but uh, sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. Soon, April, we're going to have another show, which is good. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time on AP Gaming Reels' show uh, playing Mistborn Adventure, which has been amazing. And I love it so much. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the extent of what I'm doing on the internet. Um, you can find me there if you find yourself... Um, uh, you know, around those places like Twitch or Twitter, you know, follow me and uh, you can hear about my cats. Yeah! <laughs> Super good. Awesome. And uh, once again, I'm Eric. I'm Eric Volgaris on the internet. Um, I do Once Upon a Game. Uh, if you're interested in playing with me, um, hit me up on uh, either here or if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, you can find, um, hit me up there in the comments or something, and I will get in touch with you about my Discord. Uh, Discord is like a free chat community program thing. Um, and, uh, I have a schedule there, uh, in like a, in a Google Doc that you can sign up for. Like, I have a list of all these games going into April, uh, with, with spaces available. Um, I'm always looking for new players. Um, come play RPGs with us. We're super cool, no experience necessary. Um, in fact, this would be a great jumping off point for, um, trying out role-playing games um and if if we're too busy at some point um I, the lovely members who hang out in our discord i'm sure they'll be interested at some point in, in playing with you if our time zones are, are are incompatible uh so um this friday i think i'm streaming i'm not streaming anything tomorrow um but i am streaming friday uh, i'm streaming with suzanne i think we're finishing undertale um, Saturday, I'm streaming the uh, inspectors with a uh, with a bunch of awesome um, girls uh, or ladies in in sort of like the gaming podcast entertainment stuff or designers themselves. Um, in the morning, uh, then I'm going on um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Encounter Role Plays uh, 24 hour stream uh, late in the evening um, for their show. You can catch me there in the evening, and then in the morning, I'm doing Once Upon a Game. Where we're playing Silent Legions. And then I'm playing at 2 o'clock, right after Silent Legions, 
I'm playing the Sprawl um, with with Adam Coble and John Harper and Stephen Lumpkin and everybody. So super busy, busy weekend for Eric. Um, and at some point, because I'm like a, I'm, I'll, I'll announce it now because I, I want to. Um, I've been obsessed uh, uh, with this game called uh, Ryotama RPG, and uh, I'm working at getting a podcast of it going. Um, so I'm, I'm working with some people right now. Um, a lot of cool things with that. It's going to be like a very, very polished uh, actual play with a lot of like editing and sound effects and stuff. I'm like really excited about getting into uh, the gritty parts of, of audio editing. So that's Ooh. that's because uh, you know apparently I can't I can't put enough shit on my plate. So uh, I'm just gonna it's like Thanksgiving for me with things. So like I want to do this. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it the old college try. So uh, Ryotama. Uh, that is um, for those who don't know. That is a Japanese role playing game that was recently translated. Um, it's been described as uh, Miyazaki's uh, Oregon Trail. Is how how it's laid out. So that it's sounds a, amazing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's amazing traveling game, and it should be heartwarming. So, anyways, that's the stuff I'm trying to do. So, uh, oh, thank you for the follow, Iron Fist. So that would be it for us tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, take care. Have a great evening, and uh, see ya.